Good morning, everyone. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, today I'm going to talk about the torque balance. I think you remember this guy, uh, Archimedes. He said, uh, give me a place to stand and a lever long enough, and he will move the world. So I think um, the principle of this quote is, uh, if we have a very long lever and we find a standing point, for example, the move is our standing point, and uh, um, we just uh, give a small torque, then we can move the, the earth. So I think the torque uh, in this case uh, is defined as the force times the distance. Uh, the distance is defined from the force to the standing point. So if I just uh, give you uh, a diagram and the lever, and we have standing point, this is our axis, and uh, Earth is going to push this bar and downward. And if there's no other force, this lever is going to move clockwise. Um, but to prevent the spinning, uh, we need to push another force on the other end to give a downside force. The downward force is going to uh, provide a torque. This torque will prevent the, the spinning motion of the lever. And from the, uh, the Newton's second law, we know the force times the distance is a torque. And the torque has a relation with the inertia of the rod of the lever times angular acceleration. The angular acceleration, if it is zero, if A alpha is zero, then the net torque is zero. So there are two force on the lever. One is Earth give a force downward, then called F1, and the distance is L1. And the person give the other force as F2, and the distance is L2. So the net torque will be, the net torque will be F1 times L1 minus F2 times L2. Okay. So uh, this is equal to zero. So if there's no acceleration, then I have a zero net torque. In this case, we have F1, L1 equal to F2, L2. If we ask how large should we push the, uh, the lever to move the earth, that will be F2 equal to F1, L1, L2. So if we give a force uh, equal to this one, then we will have a very uh, large force to push the F2. But if the L2 is very long, that means the lever is very long, then we can decrease the force to move the earth. Okay, this is the balance of torque. And the balance of the torque uh, is very important uh, to solve and many problems. If we have a rod, if we have a board, if we have a lever or anything, and that is very long, and uh, we apply some force at different location, and we need to make sure the force is balanced and the torque is balanced. So that's the difference. So let me give you an example how to uh, use the balance of torque to solve problem. Here, there is a problem that uh, two person are carrying a uniform wooden board and the board is three meter long and 160 Newton weight. Uh, if one person applies an upward force equal to 60 Newton, so 60 Newton on the left end, and at what point does the other person lift? 
So we are looking for the distance of x. This is what we are looking for. And to figure out the x and the magnitude of F2, to make sure the board is balanced, the board is stationary. Here, when we see the word stationary, there are two conditions. First of all, the Newton's second law said F, the net force, equal to MA. If it's stationary, that means A is zero. So the net force is zero. Net force. We have three force here, F1, F2, and the weight. The three force, at, uh, the sum of the three force is zero. And if we define uh, the positive direction is upward, then we will have F1, uh, 60 Newton plus F2 minus uh, the weight. The weight goes down. So I go to use a negative sign in front of weight and 160 plus zero. So I get F2 is 100. So this is uh, uh, the force balance. We get the magnitude of the force. But if force is balanced, it doesn't guarantee the board is stationary. For example, if I have a very long bar and I apply a force on one end and the direction is upward, the force 100 Newton, and I push another force on the other end, the force is force 100 Newton and the direction are opposite. In this case, these two force are balanced. If one goes up, one goes down, and they are equal. So force are always balanced. But this rod will spin clockwise. Mm -hmm. So even the force is balanced, but the rod is not in uh, is not in stationary. Because the force, if two force are not on the same point, it's not exerted on the same point, then the force will produce a torque. So in this case, torque is not zero. It's very important. Um, so if the torque is not zero, the rod will spin. And to make sure everything is stationary, we have to make sure net force is zero and net torque is zero. We have two conditions. So you might have question why we don't talk about torque in the previous week. Because um, in the previous week, when we talk about object, we just treat the object as a mass point. We have block and we have any object. And when we do the free body diagram, all the force are exerted on the same point. If all these uh, forces are on the same point, there is no torque. Uh, hold on. No torque. So that's why when we talk about the object, if it's stationary, then we only need to use the balance force zero. That's all. But when we talk about a rod, a bar, or a cable, or anything that has a very long shape, we have to consider the torque if those force are not exerted on the same point. Okay, in this case, and uh, since the three force are at three different locations, we have to make sure the torque is zero. To calculate the torque, we have to determine where the axis is. Determine the location of axis, the spinning point. 
um, because when we know the axis, we will know the radius. To calculate torque, we need to use the force times the radius. Um, but the radius depends on where we pick up the, the axis. So the rule of the selection of the axis is arbitrary. So it depends on the convenience. So, um, but the result doesn't depend on where we pick up the axis. I'm going to give you three examples for the same problem to tell you if I pick different position as our axis, we will get the, the same result. The so first of all, let me pick up the left point as our axis. That means if the rod can spin, then the spinning point is about the left end. Okay, then uh, we will have three fourths to produce a torque. F1 give us zero torque because the radius is zero. The axis is, is here. The point as uh, the force is on axis, so the radius is zero. The torque is zero. The weight goes down, so the torque is negative. The torque from the weight will be uh, 160 Newton times the radius, that's 1.5. Then F2 will give us another torque that will be the force, that's 100 we solved just now, 100 Newton times uh, the distance, that's X. That's what we are looking for. And we have the three, um, three torque in balance. So let me write here. So the three force, uh, the three torque is zero plus 100 times X minus 160 times 1.5, that's zero. So we can solve X equal to 160 times 1.5 over 100. That's 2.4 meter. Okay, that means X is 2.4 meter. In this case, if the X equal to 2.4 meter, the total torque is zero. Then this board doesn't spin about the axis. Okay, so that's the first method. We pick up the left end as our axis. Then let's use another method. If we pick up the axis as the center of the mass, suppose this is our axis. Then let's figure out the total torque. The total torque, there will be three force F1, F2, and weight. Since the weight is exerted on the center of the mass, so the torque from the weight is zero. Okay. So F1 times the distance as 1.5 meter minus. Why do I use minus here? So the spinning will be either clockwise or counterclockwise. Suppose I define the clockwise is positive. Then in the clockwise, the direction of the force is positive. And the F2 is in the counterclockwise direction. So F2 is negative. Then I have negative here times F2 times the L times L, that's zero. So we can solve the L equal to F1 times 1.5 meter over F2. F1 is 60 Newton, 60 times 1.5 over 100. 
that's 0.9. So L is 0.9. So the X is equal to 1.5 meter plus 0.9 meter. We got 2.4. So let me go back here. Exactly 2.5 or 2.4. So the result doesn't depend on where we pick up the axis. Eventually we will get the same result. Okay, this is second method. We pick up the center of the mass as the axis. The third method, if we pick up the right end as our axis, let's figure out the net torque. <clears throat> okay, so we define the upward as a positive direction. The upward means the positive direction of the spin is clockwise. Clockwise. So you know, clockwise is a positive. So these two forces are positive. The weight is negative. Okay. Let me write down the net torque. F1 distance is three meter because the three meter long times three meter plus F2 and we don't know the distance. So let me use L to represent. And the weight negative weight is 160 times uh, in the middle, so that's 1.5 meter. F1 is 60. and F2 is 100. So the L is equal to uh, 160 times 1.5 minus 60 times three over 100. So six, 160 times 1.5 is 80 times three. So that will be 20 times three on the numerator over 100, that's 0.6. Okay, so the X is equal to three meter, the length of the of the board mm -hmm. minus L, that's mm -hmm. 0.6. So we get 2.4 meter, so exactly the same. Okay, so I give you the conclusion is the result is independent on where the axis is selected. So no matter where you pick up the axis, you will get the same result. Okay, so the rule of the selection of the axis depends on your convenience. Usually we like to pick up and the axis at some point where there is force. Because if we pick up this point, the left point or the center, we will reduce one force. Because on the left end, F1 give us zero torque. In the center point, the weight give us the zero torque. Then we only have two other force. That will simplify our uh, calculation. If we pick up the right point, the right end, we have to consider one force, two force, and three force. Then the calculation will be complicated. So usually we pick up uh, <clears throat> a point and and there are as many force as we can exerted on that point. So if there are many force on this point, we would like to pick up the left end as our axis. Because if we pick up the left end as an axis, the one, two, three, four, the four force will give us zero torque. Then we only need to consider F2 and weight. Okay, that's uh, some trick I tell you how to pick up the axis. Then let me give you one more example. 
uh, how to solve the force by using force balance and the torque balance. Here is a uniform ladder and rest against a frictionless vertical wall. Vertical wall frictionless. On the corner is a ground. The, the ladder is five meter long and the lower end is three meter from the wall. This is a ladder. Three meter, five meter long, then that means the vertical is four meter. Four meter. And it says the ladder weighs 160 Newton. The coefficient of static friction between the roof and the ladder is 0.4. Okay, dictionary coefficient. A man weighs 740 Newton clams uh, slowly up the ladder. Start by drawing the free body diagram of the ladder was the maximum friction force that the ground can exert on the ladder at its lower end. Okay, maximum friction force. How to calculate maximum friction force? This is stationary, right? stationary friction. If it is stationary, then the maximum stationary friction depends on the normal force times the stationary friction coefficient. This is the formula. And the coefficient is 0.4, then that means we only need to figure out what's the normal force on the lower end. Lower end is here. We're looking for the normal force from the ground to the ladder. From the ground. Okay. Let's do the free body diagram. And the ladder is 160 Newton. That's the weight of the ladder. A person is also some weight. Person. Okay. Then what else? There's a friction. So what's the direction of the friction? So to figure out the direction of the friction, let's think about that. If there's no friction, if there's is no friction, what's the tent of the motion of this ladder? The tent of the motion will be rightward. So that means if there's no friction, the ladder is going to slide. The slide direction will be on the right. It won't slide on the left. So the, uh, the lower point, the lower point is going to slide to the right. So the friction is going to prevent the sliding. Right? If the force wants to provide slanting and the friction should go to the right. Is the friction. Friction go to the left. Friction is going to <clears throat> avoid the sliding. Sliding is on the right, so the friction is on the right, uh, is on the left. So that's the friction. Okay, so uh, the friction on the left, then we need a force to balance the friction. The force is from the normal force on the wall. The normal force on the wall will be in this direction. Normal force from the wall. So the NW and the friction will be in balance. In the horizontal, there are only two forces. So we have normal force from the wall and the friction from the ground. These two forces are in balance. And in the vertical direction, we have three forces, the weight of the ladder, the weight of the person, 
and the normal force from the ground. The three forces are also in balance. We have normal force from the ground equal to the weight of the letter and the weight of the person. Okay. So the, those are two pairs of balance force. Okay. Um, but from these two equations, it's very hard to solve friction and the normal force. How many unknowns do we have? This is no. This is also no. The weight are no. So we can solve the normal force from the ground. But the friction and the normal force is unknown. Um, but to get the maximum friction, let's figure out that. The maximum, we need to figure out the maximum friction. So we only need to know the normal force from the ground. Okay, so to figure out the normal force from the ground, we use the second equation. Right? This will be equal to mu s times the weight of the letter and the weight of the person. That is 24 times 160 plus 74, uh, 740, that's 900. So we have 360. That's the maximum friction. But the actual friction could be smaller than the max friction. So we are looking for the actual friction when the man climbs the one meter. So the question is why the actual friction depends on where the person is. Think about that. Um, if there's no sliding, we have an equation always correct. That is the friction equal to the normal force from the wall. If the person climbs along the axis, uh, along the ladder, the normal force from the wall will change. If the person is on the ground, the normal force is the minimum. If the person uh, climb and along the ladder, the normal force will increase. So we are going to use the balance of torque to calculate the normal force. When we have the normal force, we will get a friction. Okay, so how to get the normal force? Let's pick up an axis. To pick up axis, our rule is for convenience. So which point, let's set the axis is the most convenient position. The lower end, this point will be the axis. It's the most convenient because there are two forces on this point. If we pick up this point as axis, we only need to consider three forces. The normal force from the wall, the weight of the person and the ladder. Okay, so let's figure out the total torque. Let's define the positive direction. The positive direction, let's use clockwise. Clockwise as a positive direction. If there's a, is a positive direction is a clockwise, then the normal force will be the positive. The two weight will be negative. Okay, we have weight negative weight of the letter times the radius. That's uh, half of the length. Right? The length is five meter, so half is 2.5 meter. And we have to multiply by an angle. This is angle. Because the weight and the letter are not parallel, we have to multiply by sine theta. So the second weight is weight of the person. And it says it climb one meter along the ladder. So we times one meter. And sine angle, same angle. And plus the normal force. Normal force is what we're looking for times the distance is the total length of the ladder, five meter. Five meter. Then times the 
angle. And the angle between the lateral and the normal force equal to 90 degree minus theta so sine 90 degree minus theta. Okay, let's figure out sine theta. What's the value of sine theta? In this triangle, we have a large triangle. We have three meters side, four meter, and five meter on the ladder. So the sine, this angle, sine theta is equal to three over five. And sine 90 minus theta will be equal to four over five. Okay, so let's replace sine theta. Sine theta, three over five, three over five. This will be four over five. Let's solve the normal force. The normal force will be weight, letter, time 2.5 meter, and three over five, plus weight of the person, I'm one meter, I'm three over five, over five meter, over four over five. Then the result, uh, let me see, the result, the result is 171. Newton. The, the normal force is 171 Newton. That means the friction is 171 meter, a uh, Newton. The last one, how far along the ladder can the man climb before the ladder starting to sleep? So when sleep, that means the friction reach the maximum friction. That means the normal force equal to 360. The normal force equal to 360, let's go back to the torque balance right here. The torque balance equal to V times 2.5 sine theta, weight of the letter, 2.5 sine theta uh, minus, minus weight of the person and one meter times sine theta plus, plus normal force times five meter time sine 90 minus theta. So normal force times five meter times sine 90 minus theta. So that's this equation, right? This equation. I just copy this equation to the new page. And it says it sleep. If it sleep, then if it sleep, we have normal force equal to the maximum stationary friction, that's 36, 100, uh, 360, that's 360. And we have, uh, hold on, the person is not on one meter. We're looking for where the person is. So that means this distance is unknown. Let me set this as X. So this is not one meter. X. So the letter is 160 Newton. Sine theta is 3 over 5. So weight of person is 740. Sine theta is 3 over 5. And this is 3, 4 over 5. So we can solve the X. The X will be 2.7. That means this is the or, this is the ground, this is the letter. If the person step up, climb up at this position, then this letter will be unstable and this point is going to sleep. Okay, so you have any other question?
Okay, so if you don't have a question, I'm going to give you a short summary. And right here, a short summary. Um, to figure out uh, the force on a long shaped rod. Rod, we have many force on the rod. And this is our problem. We have two conditions. The first one is net force equal to zero. The second one is net torque equal to zero. Right. Um, but to determine the torque, we need to figure out where the axis is. So first step, second step will be pick up a convenient Axis. After we have axis, then we can write down the torque balance. Okay, and for the torque, we have to define uh, the positive direction and the negative direction. So usually we define the clockwise as positive. You can also use uh, counterclockwise, depends on your preference. Suppose we have axis here, then we define uh, clockwise positive. Then that means uh, this force will be negative. This force will be positive. This is negative. This is positive. Okay. So when we have the um, positive and negative torque, eventually we will have get a zero uh, torque. Okay, so that's uh, the short summary of this, of this topic. And at the end, I want to uh, wish you uh, uh, a happy Easter for this weekend and keep safe and keep your mask wearing and don't um, be careful because um, Although the, the confirmed case decreased, but we have to be careful and until everybody is vaccinated. And I got the news yesterday that the, uh, Pennsylvania um, just uh, announced the phase schedule. Um, we have quits today, so don't, don't leave. Um, it says um, next Monday we have um, uh, phase 1B. And uh, phase 1B, that means if you are uh, working in the university or if you are a college worker, you are the essential educator, then you can, uh, you are eligible to register for the vaccine. And on April 12th, I think most of the person in the, uh, in the university will be eligible to get the vaccine after the April 12th. And after April 19th, everybody in the Pennsylvania is eligible. So please check this calendar and schedule a vaccine. Um, hope everybody can get the, uh, the vaccine uh, before the summer. Then uh, after everybody has a, uh, um, the antibody in your, I think this semester at the end of semester or at the beginning of the four, uh, we will uh, have the in-person class. Then we can stop the remote teaching. Okay, so that's what I'm talking today. So uh, the next part is the quiz. Let me share my screen. Uh, for the registration, I can talk about the vaccine registration after the class. So you can stay with me. So let me give you a quiz first. Mm. Let me stop my sharing.